better run, man. Life's a pain, but you got me. Yeah, life's a pain, but I got you. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and today we're gonna talk about Craven the Hunter, the movie, which just dropped a trailer. And, uh, and you know, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. Uh, I had a friend at CinemaCon that saw the footage and was telling me some of what they saw and kind of was excited about it. So it got me a little bit more excited about it. And then hearing it was going to be rated R, I was like, wow, okay. I'm kind of shocked that they're doing that like this late in the game after they already established a, a couple PG-13 universes, you know, like Spider-Verse, the Spider-Man movies with Marvel and then Venom and Morbius. I'm like, why is this the one where they go rated R? And I'm like, but okay, let's see. Maybe that'll give the movie a style and it'll make it stand out visually from some of the other stuff we've seen. And it got me excited. But then I saw the trailer. And I got to tell you, Kraven is my favorite Spider-Man villain. I know a lot of people are like, isn't Venom your favorite Spider-Man villain? And I'm like, no, because I don't see Venom as, I see him as an antagonist to Spider-Man, but I don't see him as a villain. Uh, so no, he's not. Uh, he's a, a category of his own. And he's a hero now, kind of. So uh, so he's kind of fallen into that group, more anti-hero and heroes kind of stuff. But with, uh, with you know, Craven, he's a straight-up villain in the comics. And we have this book, which I've shown on this channel before, and I keep promising we're going to go through it. This has some of the most key Craven stories in it. It has his first appearance. It has a Marvel team-up where, you know, Spider-Man, I think, and Captain America fight him. There's a couple of cool issues in here um, that were, you know, where you get Craven featured, but it also has Craven's Last Hunt put in here as well, which is arguably, you know, one of the best Spider-Man stories ever written. Certainly my favorite Spider-Man story. So we will break these stories down. I'll probably do an episode where I go through this book and I'll break it into three parts. And we'll do like some of the early Craven adventures. We'll do the, you know, the the, the Craven's Last Hunt storyline. And then we'll do some of the appearances and his return from after Craven's Last Hunt as a third episode. And that's pretty much all the Craven stuff we're going to talk about on here. You know, uh, I love the character, but even for me, there's not a ton of great Craven stories. Um, but I do like the character and I'm very excited to see him in the new Spider-Man game with Venom. And so for that reason, I'm pumped. For October, we have the Insomniac Spider-Man 2 video game coming out with Craven in it as, you know, one of the main villains. And we have Venom in there as well. So for me, that is what I'm looking forward to after I saw this trailer, because this trailer really, really disappointed me. Not that I had high expectations, but I was starting to perk up after hearing what my friend told me about, you know, Craven chewing someone's eye or a piece of their face off and spitting it. And, you know, the stuff I you know heard about from CinemaCon or, you know, everything that was going on over there and they showed over there. And it got me pumped up a little bit more than I was. And then I saw the trailer and I'm like, dude, this this looks like Morbius. And the weirdest thing is, is this is rated R. And I know I watched the both trailers. I watched them both. Uh, and even the more violent trailer where he's like throwing bear traps into people's faces and you see some blood splatter and stuff. I'm like, okay, I mean, it, it's fine. You get some extra blood and everything and there'll probably be some like partial nudity in it and they'll, they'll probably drop a couple swear words. But to me, it looks like you know, what I've said before, which is making something rated R doesn't make it cool. And that's what this looks like. I'm like, this, it could have been PG-13. I mean, yeah, it's, I guess it's, you know, for some of us it might be better that it's rated R because you'll get blood and, and stuff like that. But I would rather a good story <laughs> and no matter what the rating and this, looks like Morbius 2.0 to me. You know, I will say that Jared Leto, I felt like tried a little bit and Matt Ryan, you know, kind of hammed it up in his role in Morbius. And I didn't see the movie in the theater. I didn't want to pay to see it in the theater. And I know I'm, I'm the Venom blog, but I'm not a Sony shill either. <laughs> you know, I, I, I see these things and I'm like, okay, Morbius, I'm going to avoid. And if Craven doesn't look good, I'm going to avoid that. And that's how I feel after seeing this trailer. I don't want to go see Craven in a movie theater. And I'm an actual Craven fan, and uh, and I don't want to go watch it. I wrote a Spider-Man Four screenplay where Craven was the main villain, along with the Lizard. That's how much I like Craven, and I still don't want to go see this movie. Um, so uh, so when I saw this, I, all I could think of was Morbius because the way he like runs on the ground and jumps up on the wall and he's doing that crouching move. It's like we see that in everything, like from Split to like you know other movies out there where someone's like has animal type powers. They run the same way. Morbius, he that's how he ran until he was like teleporting and moving around as like a purple shadow. I thought, I was like, well, that's actually a cool effect. Like, I'm glad they added that instead of just having him running and bouncing off walls all the time. Like, they did that sometimes, but then there was moments where you had that purple trail behind him. There's not really any style to Craven when I saw in the trailer. It looks flat. The color scheme is flat. Uh, the acting looks like, I don't know, like kind of subpar. 
And I know Aaron Taylor Johnson is a good actor. I loved him in Bullet Train, but he looks like he just stepped off the set of Bullet Train and filmed this movie. And he doesn't have a Russian accent, like, you know, but Russell Crowe does, you know, and it's it's like, I got excited at first. I was like, when my friend was telling me about CinemaCon, I was like, wow, so Craven's in it, his brother, Dimitri, AKA the Chameleon's in it. One of the villains is gonna be the Rhino, and then also the Foreigner. Uh, which is a, a Spider-Man character that was created in a novel, actually, that I think that ended up becoming a comic book character. So uh, who put together like a version of the Sinister Six, I think, in one of the novels. So it's neat. It, it's like it's it's got interesting characters in it, but it doesn't have an interesting premise. It looks like a standard Sony script or like like, you know, Morbius, for example, had Morbius and Matt Ryan's character, uh, Lucius or whatever his name was. And, uh, and the two of them were like surrogate sons to an older guy. One of the sons goes on the good path and Morbius is like the good vampire and Lucius is the evil vampire. And this is like, okay, we have, you know, Craven's father, uh, who's like, all right, I have one son who's too weak and he got injured and he's weak like his mother, who I guess his mother had mental health issues and the father deemed that as weak. So he locked her away in a, like a asylum where she died. And, uh, and then he decides, okay, Dimitri, you're going to come with me and you're going to be the, the good son, the AKA evil son. And we're going to leave the weak son behind who will then rise up and become the good guy. And it's like, or anti-hero or whatever. And when I saw that, I was like, God, this feels like the Morbius script a little bit, uh, just with a slightly different elements, but, uh, but with no extra style, you know, like, and, and Morbius movie, I didn't think had a ton of style. I thought it looked kind of flat and boring in certain, you know, the way it was shot too sometimes. But at least that purple effect when he was moving around and flying, I was like, and the, the radar and some of how his powers worked, I think they, I feel like the team put a lot of thought into how that worked. And I thought those are some of the coolest scenes in the movie is seeing that stuff happen. Even if the CG and effects weren't that great on some of them, it still was an interesting concept to me. And I was like, hey, you brought some of these powers to life. That's, that's neat. But Craven, he doesn't look like he has that at all, you know? And uh, it's, yeah, he's a mortal, you know, man. But in this one, he gets bit by a lion and the lion bleeds into his wound. And, and now he has lion powers or animal powers. So it makes me wonder, like one thing that could tie it all together is if the lion got loose from like a life foundation lab, because obviously this is a flashback. So it's a younger Craven. So it means the life foundation is still around because Eddie Brock hasn't taken them down yet. So I'm like, oh, if it's a Life Foundation experimented on animals over in this region, like they have their own, subs, you know, uh, like conglomerate, or, you know, a headquarters or something over in this region, and some of the animals got out and they hired Craven's dad to go gather the animals and bring them back safely, that could tie this all in together and be like, oh, okay, that was a Life Foundation thing. And you can see a younger Carlton Drake make a cameo in it or something like that. And that could tie all this together. And that would explain why the lion has some kind of abilities or, you know, transfers, you know, something that's mutated on. Uh, I'm going to guess Rhino, if that is the case, Rhino works for whoever did that to the lion because Rhino, he takes an injection scene at the end. He takes like a syringe and injects himself and turns into a Rhino man or starts to become one. And so I'm like, okay, maybe there's a connection to the, the lion and Rhino and, and, you know, experimentations and stuff like that. That's a possibility and that could answer some of that. But if it's just a random line that bites them, which is, this is what I feel like we're gonna get from Sony. I feel like the idea I said, tying it together with Life Foundation is just too complicated for Sony sometimes and some of their writers. Um, and, and I'm sorry if that sounds like I'm putting some of you guys down who worked on this movie and, and worked hard on it, but I'm just telling you my opinion and it's uh, and this is how I, based on past experience this is how i feel <laughs> uh you know so uh, like morbius was just you know bats and you know bleed you know he bled out and and they came by and bit him and he was able to transfer something from that it's it's like i'm not expecting the science to really be that deep so it, this could just be a random lion that bites him and he gets animal powers who knows um but either way even if it is a, a slightly more than that story um it's not, you know, just that surface level. If there's more to it than that, I still don't see myself liking this movie that much. Uh, when I saw him, like that shot with him in the costume with the fur, holding the spear up and he's in the cave and everything. I have a feeling that's from the post credit scene. <laughs> like, because the rest of the trailer shows him like in a, a black Kevlar vest kind of thing. And it's probably him piecemealing the costume together. And I'll be honest, I really hate when movies do that where they're like, oh, we're going to, you know, it's going to take to the end of the first movie before he really embodies Craven. We got to see him get there. And it's like, yeah, I agree on some level that there has to be an arc and a journey. 
but I feel like a lot of times, like with Resident, because when I think of Sony, I think of the Resident Evil movies, which are awful. I think of, you know, like uh, Morbius, you know, which is not a good movie. I think of some of the stuff they put out there that I'm just like not blown away by. And, and I, even though they've made stuff that I have been blown away by, like, you know, the Spider-Verse movies and, and the first two Venoms, which I like the first Venom a lot. The second one I'm more critical of because we had a director in Andy Serkis that I thought would bring a little bit more visual style to the film and the franchise to separate it from the first one. But it really had a similar flat look like the first one had. And I'm like, God, I, I would have liked more. And so I'm really hoping for some style added in the third one. And so to see this Craven movie with nothing really stylistic, just violent, like, oh, it's more violent. That's the style. And it's like, yeah, but it doesn't, you know, it's cool. Okay, you threw a bear trap on someone's head. Yeah, that's cool and violent. And I get it. I, like, there's a part of me that is into that too. But overall, the whole picture of what I saw in this trailer, I'm like, I feel like we saw the whole movie. I feel like I could predict this whole movie like I could with Morbius. And I don't feel like it's worth my money to, you know, to go see it in a theater. So I'm not going to go see it in the theater based off this first trailer. I don't even care if the next trailer or two blow my mind. I'm not going to. I'm, I'm looking forward to playing against Kraven in Spider-Man 2, the video game. And that comes out the same month as this movie. So I'm looking forward to that. And we will review or discuss Kraven whenever it comes out to rent. And I'll pay $5 to rent it on my Xbox. And I'll watch it that way. But I, Or if it goes to like Netflix or a streaming service that I already own, I'll watch it that way. But I'm not going to. Just like Morbius. I watched it, I think, on Netflix. I'm not going to go pay to watch it. And I don't pirate stuff. I'm never into that. So I don't encourage anyone to do that either. Just, you know, vote with your money. Don't go see it at the theaters. That's how I feel. But again, I'm not I'm not going to review the movie for you when it comes out. I'm sorry. I just, uh, I can't go see this movie. And I can't support some of these decisions that Sony's making. Like, I would have rather all this effort go into making Venom 2, Let There Be Carnage, a little bit of a stronger movie. Because I feel like, I think the first movie I rated like an 8 or so out of 10. And I think Let There Be Carnage, I rated like a 7.5, like a less than, you know... So it was a little bit of a step down for me, and I was surprising considering the talent involved. Um, so, and I thought Woody Harrelson was great. I thought Tom was great. I love those guys. I love uh, Michelle Williams and Naomi. She did a great job as Shriek. You know, I thought all the elements were there for the second movie, but it just didn't fully come together for me. And you know, but I, so I liked it a little bit less than the first one. And I wish more instead of Morbius and Craven, just more effort from the producers and everyone else went into maybe sharpening. Venom Let There Be Carnage and making that a slightly stronger movie and realizing that that's their franchise. That's their thing outside of Spider-Man. That was their golden ticket. But then they now also have Spider-Verse. I'm so glad the second one did so well. It, it's crushing right now. I think it's going to keep going well. We got Flash coming out next week, but I still feel like it, it's going to keep crushing. It's going to keep doing well. So I hope, I hope for its success because the first one was amazing and it did very little numbers at the box office but it had a second life on streaming and that saved that franchise, I think, having it on Netflix and going to streaming. So seeing across Spider-Verse 2, you know, the second one uh, going so awesome and just doing so well, that's another golden ticket. So just focus on that, Sony, and, you know, polish that third one, make sure it's a, a great finale to that. Polish Venom 3, make sure that's a great finale. And all this other stuff with Madam Web and Craven and Morbius that you're trying to do, like, I would say just stop, like, just stop, you know? Uh, I, I don't think there's a need for a lot of this stuff. It, cool concepts maybe, and, and it looks good on paper, but I don't think they're being executed well. And I don't think you're picking the right writing team. I don't think you're picking the right directing team for these side movies. And uh, and that's just my personal opinion, but you know that's what I'm here to give. So you know if you have a different opinion or the same, like I said, leave it down below. We'll keep talking. Rant over. Uh, I'll see you on the next episode. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.